Shalom, hello again. One of the most striking visions of transformation in the Bible is Ezekiel's dry bones. Witness the story of rebirth today on Our Jewish Roots with Bible teaching by Dr. Jeffrey Seidman. The Lord said unto Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. We're so glad you've joined us today. I am David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I am Jeffrey Seif. So we've been preparing for this program for a while now, and there's a song that we can't get out of our heads. You ready? Go ahead. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, bones now hear the word of the Lord. Lord. You know it. I bet you do. It's stuck <laughs> in our heads. It's the valley of the resurrected dry bones today, right? So much more to the story. It's usually sung and preached in the church within the context of God resurrecting people's lives. And while that's true, uh, the first interpretation of a passage belongs to the original recipients. He's talking about restoring Hebrew people. He is beautifully and wonderfully from dry, desolate bones to fully skinned lives that are full of him. This prophet Ezekiel had a message of destruction. They were going to be dried up and left for dead and long dried and dead, but God turns it all around. He said many, many visions Ezekiel has in his book, but this is one of the biggies. This is one of the most famous it ones. It really is one of the better known, and it was the one that, that I enjoyed teaching, but it looks a little weird when you first <laughs> worked through it. Good word for that. Yeah. Now grab your Bible, open up to Ezekiel chapter 37, as learn about those dry bones. Son of man, can these bones live? Doni, Malki, Rakata, you dare to chew. Prophesy over these bones and say, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy unto the Spirit, Son of Man. I will put my Spirit in you, and you will live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it. He was a member of the Nevi'im, the prophets, but he was more than just a prophet. He was a roe, a seer, a visionary, but he was more than just a seer. Ezekiel was a member of the Kohanim, he was a priest. And for that reason, he must have been shocked when he was set down in a place like this. And why is that? 
because a priest would never frequent a place like this. But God brought him here and he shocked him in bringing him here in a vision. But he didn't just bring him here to shock him. He brought him here to tell the greatest story ever told. It's a story about Israel coming back to life. Israel, that for hundreds and thousands of years was forced to wander. Israel, a people. Israel, a state wiped off the earth, would come back and enjoy her former estate. And why is that? Because God would bring back the dispirited exiles. Those vanquished from the homeland for centuries would begin to make their way back. Oh, I love this story. Seif is a German name. My mother was smuggled out of Nazi Germany. My father, who was German Jewish, Came over, just, came over just before the war. My mother was smuggled out of Nazi Germany and we used to say we could take mom out of Germany, but we couldn't take Germany out of mom. She died in a mental hospital some years ago. Mom had a hope sickness. And here Ezekiel has a word to millions that have a hope sickness. It's a word of restoration, we're told, in chapter 37, verse 1, Hayata Alayad Adonoi, and the hand of the Lord was upon me, and the Lord carried me in the Spirit, says our prophet, and brought me down to a place like this. He didn't bring him here to shock him, as I said. He brought him here to bless him and tell the story of how these bones would come together bone upon bone. And then after the rattling of the bones, flesh would come upon. And with the flesh, skin. And with the skin, breath. And with the breath, life. And we're told here that these bones, in verse 11, are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, according to the text, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. Interestingly, the national anthem for the modern nation state of Israel is a song called Hatikva, which means the hope. What a beautiful song. It's a song that evolves out of this story and it shows some connectedness. As decades ago, the Lord started bringing Jewish people back to the ancestral homeland. And with the revival of life in Israel is the revival of hope. Friends, it's a modern story, but it's not just a modern story. It's a story that was presaged in the ancient word. And this gets us to the story for today. Ezekiel envisions in no uncertain terms at day's end that Israel is reconstituted as a nation state, brought to life. And oh, what a life it is. And oh, how alive it is. As it seems the Lord has brought back to staring persons. And he's brought people back to Israel, the land of Israel, the land of hope, the land of promise. And in so doing, he fulfilled the promise that was told many years ago when Ezekiel was predicting what God would do to and through the Jew. With this very gavel, in this very place, on May 14, 1948, a meeting was called to order, and from this podium, David Ben-Gurion expressed what is Israel's Declaration of Independence. From this word, this very word, 
Thousands of years ago, a man was called forth from a place called Tel Aviv, much as here we are in modern Israel right now in Tel Aviv. This prophet was called forth and he declared from his vantage point that at some point in time out in the distant future, Israel would be reconstituted as a nation state. In chapter 37, verse 12, our prophet Ezekiel says, Lokain hinover, therefore prophesy, Viramarta alehem, and say to them, Koamar radanoi, thus saith the Lord, Hine rani poteach et bekivrotechem, I will open your graves, Vahaleti etchem bekivrotechem, and cause you to come out of your graves, Ami, my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel. And as I stand in this sacred place, Israel, and as I speak to you from this special place here in Tel Aviv, where independence was announced in 1948, I can't help but believe that I'm living in a world of prophecy fulfilled. For after many, many, many centuries of exile, dispersed amongst the people of the world, hounded and harangued in most of the places where we were dispersed, culminating finally and fully in the atrocities of the Holocaust. Who would ever think that after receiving such a bludgeoning so long, culminating in untold miseries for millions. We know the story generally of how one out of every three Jews in the face of the earth were slaughtered. And there's ample pictures in public record of when the Allied forces came to um, redeem those that were uh, held in these concentration camps. We saw these human skeletons, these emaciated forms, with but a little spark of life in them, barely holding to life and having long since given up holding on to hope. But fortuitously, providentially, there was a redemption. And the redemption there, it seems to me, reaches its fruition in the redemption here, when finally and fully after waves of immigration, beginning actually before the Holocaust itself, in the 1880s, you have uh, waves of immigrants coming over here to the New World, establishing a toehold and a foothold here in the ancestral homeland. Ezekiel saw it and they lived it. And you and I are witnesses to it. It's a great story, wonderful story, a story that should be heralded from pulpit to pulpit across the land and around the world. For every Bible-believing person, surely must needs read the story and say, my God, you're working wonders in the earth. But that's not the story. Inasmuch as God has raised up Israel, the story of Israel's emergence did not go unopposed back then, much as its continued existence doesn't go unopposed today. Difficulties notwithstanding, however, God is watching over his word to perform it. And this is one of the messages that we see when we read the prophet Ezekiel. Our resources this week, Glory, the Future of the Believers. In this booklet, Zola Levitt explains the coming rapture, our time in heaven, the kingdom on earth, and eternity. Call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. Remember to connect with us on social media for so much extra content. Find us at Our Jewish Roots. For many, a trip to the Holy Land is the dream of a lifetime. Where else can you go see the scriptures come alive as you visit the sites where so many biblical events happened? We invite you to come on a Zola tour in the spring or the fall as we explore Israel and Petra. Reserve your dream of a lifetime. Contact us for more information.
on our last trip to Israel, we were in Tiberias, which is one of our favorite places that we go on our tour. And we were standing literally in mustard plants. It's all over blooming. It's beautiful. And we were standing in it just like Jesus did when he taught about the mustard seed. We would love for you to join us and maybe stand in that same place. We go both in the fall and the spring. Join us on a tour to Israel. It's so incredible. You talk about standing in this field of, <laughs> of the mustard plants, not like ketchup and mustard, but these mustard <laughs> plants. And what is so incredible about the land of Israel? I mean, there's so many things. It, how it relates to our program today is Dr. Seif is talking about fulfilled prophecy, that the land will come alive again. And that's so evident as we walk, even in the field of mustard plants. It's not desolate anymore. This land is blooming and thriving. And this program thrives because you see the value in what we bring to you. And we're so, so appreciative of all our viewers, of those who uh, contact us on social media. You make this program possible by giving. So thank you, thank you so much. We're thankful for all of you. Right now we take you to Tel Aviv where Dr. Seif is at the Independence Hall. It's amazing, we go there right now. Theodore Herzl was a newspaper reporter in a bygone era. An Austrian reporter particularly, he was covering the Dreyfus Affair, a story how a Jewish military officer was getting railroaded by the French. He became convinced in the process of that that for all that Jews suffer, what Jews need is to return to the ancestral homeland. He became God's instrument to help facilitate the miracle that's commemorated in this place where it was celebrated and first announced to the world through this microphone, in fact. Ben-Gurion spoke into it and said, now is the time. Well, what Ben-Gurion spoke years ago to the revered delegates in this room, to the council members, to Israel through national radio, and to the world at large, what he spoke then through here was actually presaged by the prophet here. Why do I say that? In Ezekiel chapter 37, 25, the prophet says, Vayashvu al asher notati l'avdi liyakov, and they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, Asher Yoshvu Boavotechem, wherein your fathers dwelt. He says, I'm going to give you the land back. In verse 24, he is insightful as well. The Avdi David Melech Alehem, and my servant David shall be king over them. Isn't it striking, by the way, that the modern nation state of Israel flies under the banner of the Mugen David, the shield of David, the star of David? and carries with it the memory of David. There's a song, Am Yisroel Hai, the people of Israel live. And I grew up singing a song, David Melech Yisrael Chai Vizchayon David, the king of Israel lives on. Israel doesn't just live on in memory for individuals that walk through the pages of the Bible in their daily devotions. Israel lives on in history, why? Because of a modern miracle a miracle that attests to modern, that the God in the ancient word is also the God in the modern world. For the scripture says in Ezekiel and elsewhere, but particularly in Ezekiel over and again, God says, I'm gonna bring about this miracle in order that the world might know me in no uncertain terms. And I'd like to call upon women and men of good faith and virtue 
to get behind the struggle here in modern Israel. For I believe that getting behind the Jewish people with prayers, cares, donation, every which way, I think getting behind that is really getting behind God. And in much the same way, I believe that resisting that is resisting God. I believe that trying to get in the way of that is trying to put a stumbling block in the way of God. I look at the contest being played out here in Israel as something that's spiritual, not just material. I believe that any Bible teacher that claims to be a lover of the Word of God that does not support Israel, any minister with that position ought to be sued for malpractice. This person is not in touch with the rhythms of the text. This person is not in touch with the hopes and the aspirations of the literature. And if you're involved in a church like that, I would say flee and make your way to a Bible church. Because when you have a Bible church that teaches what's happening in the Word and look at what's happening in the world, faith is strengthened. And we need to be in a world where faith is strengthened. This series, of course, looks at the various pieces in Ezekiel's puzzle. And here in this program, we consider it a very, very important piece one that is so, so significant, and that is that God says to his people of Israel, you've been scattered, you've been maligned, you've been hurt, and your hope is waning. But know this, that I am for you, that I will regather you, and I will bring you back into your land. It doesn't get any clearer than this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're living in the moment of the fulfillment of Ezekiel's promise. Pretty amazing, Dr. Seif, that you were able to get into Independence Hall and have some time there to teach. What a place to be. I uh, don't take lightly the fact that I'm able to do it. Of course, I'm able to do it because our friends send me to Israel, us to Israel, television crews to Israel, but that Israel opened up the door to help us tell the story and that people open up their hearts to hear it, it really is an honor. Well, I'm just like, it's the miracle of miracles. We got a miracle in the house. We got a state back. The people are back. They're back in their land. I mean, it, no other country, am I correct? No other country after 2,000 years has come back. It's never happened. And when I think of what we came back from, um, I'm of German Jewish extract myself. And my degree at Cambridge University uh, had a strong dose of Holocaust related yeah. studies. And when, when I think of the dire circumstances and to see what God did to turn it around, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's just so exciting. And uh, I, I just know the hearts of Hebrew people that came to the ancestral land and feared and fought and struggled and pressed mm -hmm. on and to see the miracle that is Israel today as a result of all that, it's just I mean, I'm reasonably good with words, but uh, it's, it's hard to find them now. I can sense that right now. Yeah. yeah. Struggling to find a yeah. way. It's, it's hard to find words to describe how profound it is. But it's worth noting that Ezekiel had the words in his day, mm. uh, many years, thousands of years before him. He saw restoration. Isn't that something? Here's a question for you. And, and I know you grew up in a Jewish home. Your parents had the opportunity to go to the Holy Land, yes? No, 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 no. That... Uh, um, my, my family uh, were refugees that came to America. They didn't go to Israel. Now, my father died. Uh, I was 16 years old when dad mm -hmm. died, and in my young 20s when my mother died. Um, but, but they were American Jews. 
They, they didn't, I wish they, didn't they had had that opportunity to touch their feet it, in that land. It, we, we all gave to yeah. it. And I remember growing up that uh, people would come knocking on doors for various Jewish causes. And our family sent our money there, even though they didn't send themselves there. Uh, I'm sure they would have had they lived longer, but unfortunately. Well, my mother died in a mental hospital. You know, mm. she was so traumatized by, by Hitler's Germany. They got her out of Germany, but she never got that out of her system. And uh, sorry, as, Christ, as church people, should I say, we didn't have the opportunities to grow up in a Jewish home. And what we feel for that land, but I can't even imagine those first immigrants coming out of World War II, such, such a few amount of people, there weren't that many no. that, that survived. But that first time coming to a place where they, oh, I just have goosebumps, where they finally belonged. And the fact that Ezekiel in his lifetime saw that that would happen. It's just incredible. You know, the story began in 1882, not 1948, actually, with immigrants coming back. And this was, there were a lot of evangelical believers that were looking at Bible prophecy and seeing it. And it was happening. There were various waves of immigration to Israel, principally because of anti-Semitism in Europe. People were fleeing to get out of trouble. And so the story, um, is lesser known. It didn't just happen in 1948. Uh, something did happen, of course, the War of Independence, but there were uh, many Jews there before the war, and there many have come since. But it, it's a story of, of a people's struggle who were displaced to find their place in the world. Mm. And we're the recipients of uh, all that struggle, uh, recipients of struggle, but we reap the reward of what they walk through and we're eternally grateful for those. I think the principal reward is just to see that God can watch over his word and perform it, difficulties aside. That's it's why a great it's story. important to study prophecy. I think it is too. Mm -hmm. Glad to study it with you. Let's study it again, but we'll do it next week. How about that? As you go now, Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store. There you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries helps us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember, we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you.